Hey everyone, today I want to talk briefly about CRISPR, the much venerated gene editing tool that was initially hailed as revolutionary and groundbreaking. The CRISPR method uses an enzyme called Cas9 that was taken from the immune system of bacteria, and it carries a piece of RNA that it uses as a single target marker. Whatever particular piece of RNA it has, the RNA will selectively bind to a specific region of DNA, which gives the enzyme a targeting capacity. Once bound to the DNA molecule, Cas9 will make a break in both strands. It'll basically cleave the DNA molecule apart at that point, like scissors cutting through string. This is a powerful gene editing technology because it allows us to identify and extract very specific sequences of DNA to either delete them from a genome, or to extract them and then transplant them somewhere else in the genome, or even transplant them into the genomes of other organisms. Now, I don't want to rain too hard on the parade, because CRISPR genuinely is a huge advancement in gene editing technology, but it's far from perfect. Almost immediately, researchers noticed that genes edited with CRISPR were full of errors, like holes or breaks in the DNA, and mutations and synthesis errors that should have been repaired. So, while we could excise and insert genes as we desired, the process was messy, and it left behind a ragged, messed-up molecule of DNA. Now, the study that I want to tell you about analyzed the CRISPR mechanism to figure out why this was happening. What, specifically, on a molecular level, was it that was causing the CRISPR-Cas9 enzyme to be so sloppy? And what could be done to fix it and make it work better? Well, it turns out that the Cas9 protein stays bound to the DNA even after it makes the double strand break. And this persistent binding physically blocks the repair enzymes from coming in and fixing the DNA. So Cas9 makes the cut and it might even be a little sloppy with its cut and damage some nucleotides farther up the chain, but then it'll just huddle over the damage so that nothing can repair it. That's bad. But the researchers also found that the Cas9 enzyme can be successfully dislodged if an RNA polymerase enzyme comes down the DNA strand and rams into it. That's good. But this only works if the RNA polymerase approaches the Cas9 from the right direction. If it hits it from the wrong direction, nothing really happens. The Cas9 isn't dislodged, and the repair enzymes still can't get to the damage. That's bad. But ultimately, the study presents good news. Because now we can learn how to use CRISPR technology more effectively. Now we know that the Cas9 needs to be removed from the DNA after it makes a cut. And the RNA polymerase can do this, depending of course, on how the enzymes are positioned relative to one another. Hopefully this knowledge will lead to cleaner DNA editing, with fewer errors, and thus, healthier outcomes.